Honestly, these dear people are not making it that easy to be a Coffee Gear reviewer. It's only been two months since I reviewed the DF64V and I was actually ready to go on summer holiday, pack up the studio, go away, just sip green tea for a couple of weeks, reset my taste buds. But then out of nowhere, they dropped this one here, the all new redesigned Gen 2 of the DF64. And then just like that, holiday plans canceled. When you think about it, it's actually crazy how much has happened in the short time since the first DF64 grinder was released in 2021. Since then, we have seen a bunch of upgrade, DF64 E, P, V, you name it. And there's also a DF83. And still to this day, I think nobody has a clue what the DF even stands for. Uh, from my research, what I found out is that there's a factory somewhere in China, it's called the uh, Shijiang Fei Lai, and they have a subdivision that produces uh, coffee grinders called FL Coffee. But besides that, most is unknown. Then there are some uh, distributors in Europe and US and other parts of the world, and then they bring in the grinder, rebrand it a bit, maybe they throw in their own accessories or give it a different name, and uh, that's how it works. So this particular model I have here is from uh, Me Coffee from the US, and uh, Luke from the brand has been kind enough to send me a few of the DF grinders before to review. Me Coffee doesn't get to see the review before it's published, but as a part of our agreement, I do have links to their website. So if you want to pre-order this one, then you can find a link to Me Coffee down below. But enough preamble, let's get into the nitty gritty of this review. So here is the OG DF64. And uh, while the two grinders look quite similar on the surface, when you dig down below, there are many small differences. So let's just go into it now. First, let's start on the outside. As you can see, we now have a nice matte finish, uh, similar to what you'll see on the DF83. And that is as opposed to that kind of uh, cheap feeling vinyl wrapper uh, that was kind of shiny that you had on the original. So huge upgrade here. And then the on and off button that many people hated, it was previously located down here under the catch cup. It could be kind of hard to reach. And now they find a good position here on the side of the body. By the way, this uh, on off button here is red. It looks a little bit ugly on some of the product pictures, but I have to say when you got it on the kitchen counter, it doesn't stand out that much in real life. And another nice bonus is that uh, this button is not backlit. Uh, this one here would uh, always be on, always shining. And that is something I really uh, complained about in my previous reviews of the DF grinders. One of the things that just really bothered me with the old DF64 was this weird uh, coffee bean dial indicator that you had here. I don't know if that's just me, but I found that it was a real eyesore. And luckily they have also done away with it on this version. Besides that, the whole front, the chute uh, is kind of redesigned and it looks a lot more snazzy, a little bit like the DF83. Instead of having this uh, panel here, everything just looks a lot more modern and clean. We have a dial indicator that uh, comes uh, stuck from the factory. And then we have a wooden lid on the top here. And this is actually a pretty nice wooden lid. Uh, I will say it's a lot nicer material than the one that's used with the DF64V. The grinder also comes with this uh, really nice anti-popcorn disc. So if you just lift it up here, then it sits inside the bean chamber. And uh, this one works really well and it really uh, cuts down the popcorning because you don't have that many beans jumping around. Uh, they'll just jump up here and then they'll quickly get pushed back into the ground chamber. So actually I did a little test because the DF83 also has some popcorning problems. So I tried putting this anti-popcorn thing inside it and it actually cut down the grinding time about 10 seconds for a pretty standard dose. So it definitely works pretty well. Before what was quite common was that people would 3D print stuff like this and uh, it was always kind of a little bit annoying. Now you can also see here some plastic is falling off. And that's also the thing with all this 3D printing is if you're going to use it with something like a grinder where a lot of stuff is flying around, there's a lot of friction, high RPM. Well, maybe it's not really the best idea. I was never really happy with any of the mods for the old DF64. So it's just a really nice thing that they solved it with this one. But let's just do a little uh, speed and retention test and then we can see how the grinder works in daily life. I have 16 grams of coffee here and the grind setting is 10. So that's around a typical espresso setting. And let's just load in the beans. Let's go for a cold start. OK, 
Okay, and I think that's it. Just a few small pumps. And we got 15.9 grams out. So uh, this is very typical from uh, what I've seen in daily use. Uh, typically the range is uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, occasionally 0 0.3, but I will say most of the time it's uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. So I will say top marks in this category. Besides the aluminum catch cup, we also have this one here, this uh, dosing ring, and that can actually be placed on top of the catch cup, and then that will make the distance to the chute a lot shorter. It does work fine, but I would have preferred just to have a taller catch cup in general, uh, then you wouldn't have an extra item to worry about on your coffee station, which can already be quite messy if you're like me, but I guess you can't get everything you wish for, and uh, now the brand has a reason to go back and make a DF64 uh, Gen 3 version 7 or something like that with a perfect catch cup. One good thing about this ring here is that you can place it on top of a porter filter and then grind directly into uh, that one. Just place it inside here with the locks, but uh, personally I just prefer using a catch cup instead. So that's the outside, but what really matters is the inside, both when it comes to people, but especially when it comes to grinders from factories that have previously had more dubious decisions regarding UX and burr chamber design. And I'm happy to report that things also look pretty good in this regard. The burr chamber is like a mix of the DF83 and the DF64V, and that's a really good thing. It's easy to access and has very minimal retention. The grind chamber is quite neat, so it's easy to go in and change burrs, and there's not a whole lot of space and a lot of nooks and crannies that can take up coffee grounds. So again, that's one of the reasons that the retention is so low. The original DF64 was extremely messy. It was possible to get it down to a more acceptable level if you didn't mind uh, tinkering a bit. So on this one here, I've exchanged the clump crusher, uh, that declumping uh, flap that kind of sits uh, just before the chute. And that has really helped to minimize the problem. I also use a different uh, grounds cup holder uh, that is closer to the chute. So again, that helps the problem. Actually, I wanted to do a little test here uh, for comparison before and after, uh, but there wasn't a huge difference because uh, this one uh, has managed to get a lot better with all these small tweaks that you can do at home. However, this one here just works perfect out of the box. And the reason why the static is now reduced so efficiently is because there's a different clump crusher design in there as well. And then there's a new technology called a plasma generator as well. I have to admit that I actually had no idea what plasma is except some weird substance used in computer games in the 90s. So I had to consult my good friend ChatGPT, who informed me that it was some kind of fourth state of uh, material. Uh, it sounded very esoteric. I was still quite puzzled by this answer, so I asked about what some industrial applications were. And apparently it's used in fusion reactors, spacecrafts, and now also in coffee grinders. So talk about an upgrade. Inside the grinder, we also have a completely new burr set compared to the old Ital Mill one in the original DF64. This one here looks a lot like the DF64V. Uh, however, that burr set is uh, coated with something called the uh, DLC. So that means it looks kind of uh, dark black, whereas this one is uncoated and looks more like uh, regular burrs. I will say they don't perform quite similar. I guess there's something about the coating that will kind of change the mouthfeel a little bit and also the higher RPM. One of the cool things about the DF64V is that you can grind at lower speeds, and I feel like that really changes the flavor profile, especially of drip coffee, uh, maybe along with the coating. I'm not sure exactly what has the biggest difference, uh, but just know that these burrs are good, but they're not quite the same as the DF64V. But let's run a little filter coffee test, and then we can talk more about the differences. Okay, and two minutes. Hey, Esa from the future, just jumping in here. As I was looking over the edit of this video, I realized that the tasting session was just a bit too confusing and actually not creating the clarity that I think there is between these two grinders. Uh, I don't want to make too many excuses, but essentially I didn't guess the right cups on the table because I was using a new decaf coffee and hadn't adjusted the grind size the right way. That's fine, that's just what happens. But on the other hand, I don't want 
want you to take away the impression that uh, the differences between these two grinders aren't that uh, big. So the old burr set is quite blended and a little bit flat when it comes to uh, drip coffee. I'd give it a 2.5 out of 5. It's an okay cup, but it's really lacking uh, flavor separation and acidity. The new DF with the new burrs would be more like a 3.75. It actually has a lot of crispness and it's more acidity forward. It can be a bit unbalanced and the acidity can go from nice to a bit astringent quite easily. But if you brew with it every day, this is something you can manage. If you compare it to the EasyPress OK Ultra, it's quite close in terms of acidity and body, but the complexity and the aftertaste of the Ultra is just a little bit more smooth and round, so I will give that one a 4. And then in the range around 4.5 to 5, that's where you'll find those more specialized grinders, uh, often with uh, SSP burrs installed. So I hope that cuts through any confusion, and now back to the old video. And let's also try a little espresso. Also a pretty nice shot. I will say these burrs, they're definitely leaning a bit more to the modern side. So it's less blended than the Ital Mill would be. So you have a decent amount of clarity while still also having a quite good body. So there might be some changes with a bit more of seasoning. I run a couple of kilos through it already, uh, but I'm not sure the burrs have settled. Uh, but I will say in my testing period, it has been uh, quite nice shots, uh, decent clarity. The same in the filter coffee arena with a little bit tilting towards the acidic side uh, but not in an unpleasant way. So while it's nice that there are some updated burrs in the grinder and that they perform well for both uh, espresso and filter, I don't think it's that important because I know probably most people who get the DF64 are going to end up upgrading with some different kinds of burrs. SSP, many other uh, brands. 64 millimeter is by far the most uh, common size for burrs and uh, DF is the uh, most popular or at least one of the most popular grinders for modding so I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Overall I will say that the new DF64 is uh, everything that the original should have been. It's nice that we finally have it here a few years too late. Uh, it's just a solid uh, performer all around with a nice workflow and all these small quirks have uh, mostly been fixed. The DF83 of course has the bigger burrs and the bigger motor. The DF64V is a bit smaller, it's more nimble, more quiet and elegant. Uh, but overall these grinders are quite a bit more expensive and I don't think the performance is a whole lot better than what you get here. So this is truly a bang for the buck grinder and I think it's probably going to be the best value grinder from uh, DF so far. But I'm also curious about what you think. Have you used uh, one of the other DF grinders and could you be tempted to upgrade to this one? I'll be curious to hear your thoughts down below and if you have any uh, questions then of course you're also welcome to drop them down there.